every weekend there's every type of music going on. Jazz, blues, metal, punk. And it's it's exciting. I mean, you know, when people visit here, they're I think that, you know, they're in shock. They don't really know what they're in for. Um, there are a few other places like this where it, you just say you have a lot of venues in one area. I mean, I think Austin, Texas is one. New Orleans is one too. And you, you know, you think of um, Southwest music, you know, in Austin. You think, you think of uh, you know Cajun and Creole in New Orleans, but like both those places have a lot of different kinds of music as well. And um, New York just has so much. So I think it's a perfect place to be doing a, a show like tonight, where you have uh, you have metal from Cuba and supported by some of these great uh, up and coming metal groups. And I bet it's true for you too. Like about three or four weeks ago, you played about four blocks away from me at the Best Buy Theater. Of course, you were the Ben Testament, and you had Overkill with you. And so, you know, it's, it's cool because I'm sure for you, it's like, hey, I can play that, I can play that, but it's always about the people who are there who keep this like machine going. This metal machine is only going because of the fans, whether it's oh, yeah. here today or at your bigger shows. And, and, and you know this. Oh, yeah, well, actually, I did, yeah, we played the, the Best Buy with Overkill, and then um, a week later, I flew in on a day off and played uh, The Stone, which is um, this little arts venue run by John Zorn, who yeah, is kind of known in the rock world for producing Mr. Bungle, but he's also an avant-garde jazz musician. And Vernon Reed from Living Color is uh, the uh, curator of certain shows there. So I played there with my trio, which is like this total yeah, small artsy thing. And then, uh, you know, doing a thing like this, I mean, to me, it's all it's all music. It's all it's all related. So I, I can't imagine um, placing limits and just doing one thing. And that's you know another reason why it's just great great to be in New York because you can't get away with doing doing all this stuff. And it's cool because obviously escape broke all these borders, all these barriers. But that's something that you yourself did. You know, like every single person in our especially the heavy metal family of the world, nobody got anything easily because it's still always an outcast genre of music. We're still outcast artists. You know, it never it never changes. Oh, always. Yeah, I do jazz as well. And I, I've, as I mentioned earlier, I've taken some heat for that. All the people have gotten much more accepting. But one, one of the reasons um, I think jazz relates to metal, they, they've both sort of had the same disrespect at, from the mainstream <laughs> in different ways. Um, and the, you know, the Grammy Awards is a perfect example. Um, at you know, this recent Grammys, they had three of the, the greatest jazz musicians, um, Kenny Garrett, Chick Corea, and um, Stanley Clark, paying tribute to Dave Brubeck, his legend. And they cut them off after a minute so they could bring out Justin Timberlake. <laughs> um, and this, yeah, this is the same organization that, you know, took the hard rock category but merged it with the metal category. So now they're all in one category. They don't even televise it anymore. If, if you're up for the metal Grammy, you're not even televised. Yeah, that's reflective of how metal has often been seen. You know, there are a bunch of honorary metal bands. I would consider uh, Rush an honorary metal band. Um, so Rush finally uh, got inducted. inducted into the Rock Hall of Fame, but it, it took so many years, and it's almost you know it was almost a joke by the time it happened. So much that <laughs> Alex Lifeson did this hilarious speech where they like for several minutes all he said was blah 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 blah, and uh, that, that that was a hell of a statement. Hey, let's talk about Testament right now. The Dark Horse of Earth is, I mean, in, in Horse Star Brox, as I told Chuck when I talked to him, it was number one because that was the album, period. Of course, you know you have pressure, but you guys seem to be very comfortable because you're like, all right, this is what the metal kids need right now. Yeah, I, th I think um, we just reached a point where 
we knew, um, well, we're not going to get considered for Grammys. We're not going to get like the biggest tours. Yeah, that's just going to elude us. So um, let's just do an album that sounds like a good album and a good representation of what we used to do, but modern enough to sound correct. And it's not always easy. You know, we have to work through a lot of ideas and uh, there's a lot of hashing out <laughs> that has to be done. But at the end of the day, you know, we, the album doesn't get released until we like it. And uh, I think, yeah, the, the fans have been so great. And I, I think just judging by the reaction, we're doing it the right way. We're just, yeah, we're yeah, listening to ourselves. And sure, we, we care what what people, of course we care what people think, we want people to like the music, but um, ultimately, as long as we like the music, it's, it, should, it should do okay. For some reason, um, in the last few years, uh, just a lot of things have made sense, a lot of things have come together. Um, and yeah, it includes everything we're talking about, but I, you know, I also always uh, dreamed of writing. So I have lots of writing I want to do. So I'm, I mean, I'm really focused on my next book, but I finally did my first book, and it's called uh, Geek to Guitar Hero. I also have an amp coming out, uh, the Alex Skolnick uh, signature amp, uh, being put out by Buddha, which makes great amps. Um, they've been more known for um, blues and traditional rock, but this this is a, an amp that works for everything. I've I've used it with the trio. I've used it with Testament this last tour, and um, I'm very excited about that. So I'm also um, doing a lot of appearances um, for the amp and for the book. Um, and then the other project that I've been working on for a long time is um, it's called Planetary Coalition, and that's going to be this. Um, open-ended project with um, it's very collaborative with musicians from all over the world partly inspired by um, yeah working with guys like escape Cuba uh, Krasikauta mm -hmm. from Iraq mm -hmm. but also um, just meeting musicians from different cultures you know like uh, last week I, I met a hero of mine Al Demiola got to hang out with him his piano player is Gonzalo Bacaba, this great Cuban piano player, and just you know, hearing stuff like that is really inspiring. Um, I toured with Rodrigo and Gabriela mm -hmm, a few mm -hmm. years ago from Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, these uh, fans from Argentina wrote to me, and they're uh, percussionists, and they love metal, but they do like traditional Argentinian percussion. Eventually, I just had this idea, you know, I, I could. Eventually, you have know, two projects with, you know, that represent all these other interests. They have a, a, a real um, international flavor. So I've been putting the pieces together, and I've I've written some music for this project, and I've even done a couple performances. Uh, one was in Union Square last year mm -hmm. as part of Make Music New York, um, and then at my book release party, uh, mm -hmm. we did some of these. Yeah, so I don't know how long it's going to take to get that together, so I'm not putting a timeline on it. But um, it's just a combination of, you know, being a fan of acoustic music and playing. I do a lot of work out a lot of my ideas on acoustic. You don't get to hear me play acoustic with any of my other projects. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to have so the idea is to have a project where I play acoustic, but I also collaborate with all these uh, international musicians. Wish me luck on And hey, in uh, the second season of Without Our Education, which is connects everybody who is here tonight, we have oh, Sheep yeah, Hill, uh, Tomatoes House of Rock. Yeah, yeah it's like we have round two coming in. That's another one, yeah. Um, Louder Education has been this um, f fun project where um, I go with, I, I co host a series with um, a guy named Tomato, <laughs> no joke, who's a great drummer. And uh, he's from the band Sound of Urchin. And he runs a, a school. It's kind of like School of Rock, but it's even cooler. It's, got <laughs> it's very much more individual. And um, uh, 
you know, we talk to the kids, we jam with them, we bring in special guests. Uh, we've had some great guests, Richard Christie from Charballs of the Damned and Howard Stern. Um, and death, of course. <laughs> and death, yeah. He was our, yeah, he was our first guest. Um, you know, uh, Odorous from Guar. Um, anyway, the whole, the whole thing has been great, so we're planning a second season of that. It never gets tired, man, especially because, you know, us metal family people, we do this for the heart. I love how you're wearing Tommy Prong. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> what a great band. And not, not as well known as they should be, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. uh, really great band. Hey, do you go through any warm-up rituals? Because I know you have your guitar over there, so maybe the fans want to see your warm-up ritual before you go jam with Skate. Oh, um, Are you down? <laughs> Sure, if you want, I, <laughs> sure, I'll show you a little bit of what I do. Okay, so anytime I'm um, <clears throat> getting ready to, to perform, um, I, always, I always try to take um, a fast lick that I like, and it can be anything, um, and play it and just play variations on it. So uh, earlier I, I mentioned uh, Al Demula, and um, you know, one of my favorite licks of his is uh, it's from his album Elegant Gypsy, and he does this lick. Uh, right. So what that is is um, it's going up the scale, right? Four notes: one, two, three, four, and down. Well, I'll just start with that. So four notes. So I might take those four notes and move them through the scale. And then maybe I'll find another lick. So here's just a four note pattern. Maybe I'll move up the scale with that. There's those uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. first eight notes of this albinella like right? So now I'm just moving it around. Variations. All right, and then maybe I'll take um, just four notes, right? And I'll imagine a groove, imagine a drummer playing. And I'll move that around. So by this time, I start to get warmed up. And this is all on just two strings, too. All right, so maybe I'll, I'll do the next two strings. <laughs> and there you have it. <laughs> Thank you, Alex.